Coming up this week on the Double T Insider, Texas Tech head football coach Cliff Kingsbury finalizes his coaching staff for the 2013 season. Who is on the new look staff? We will let you know. Caroline Stark is entering her senior season here at Texas Tech. We take time with the Lady Raider as she reflects on her time wearing the scarlet and black. Sophomore Jacorian Duffield continues to jump higher and higher in 2013. We catch up with the Red Raider this week. And we put a Red Raider on the clock where they have to answer 10 questions in 60 seconds. That and more is coming up this week on the Double T Insider. Let's go! Double T Insider is brought to you by the College of Media and Communications and is entirely produced by students of the college. Welcome into a brand new edition of the Double T Insider, everyone. I'm Joshua Cook, joined by Erica Taylor, as this week we bring you another week of inside access into Texas Tech athletics. And this past week for Texas Tech football fans was an exciting one, as Texas Tech Athletic Director Kirby Hokut announced changes to the season ticket packages, including an eight-month plan if tickets are bought by January 31st, and also 10 sections at Jones AT&T Stadium have had their prices reduced on season tickets. But Erica, that's not the only thing changing around the Texas Tech football program this week. That's right, the staff of head coach Cliff Kingsbury is finally in place for the 2013 football season. This week he announced a total of nine new members to the football staff and six of those new members are also former Red Raiders. Here's the story. Red Raider Nation, welcome with me, your new head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. It wasn't that long ago that Cliff Kingsbury was just being formally introduced as the new head coach of Texas Tech football. But now, just a few weeks later, Kingsbury is doing some introductions of his own, introducing Red Raider fans to the brand new looking coaching staff here at Texas Tech. Nine new coaches will be walking the sidelines this season, including one former coach that Kingsbury did retain onto his staff. But Kingsbury took time last week to formally introduce his new staff here at Texas Tech. Start with defense coordinator Matt Wallerstadt. He was at Texas A&M last year as a linebackers coach. That's where I got to know him. He's uh, been a defense coordinator at three other spots, including Air Force. Um, when I was at University of Houston, we faced him. One of the ch most challenging schemes I've seen as a coach and does a great job. Very aggressive, aggressive in, in recruiting. Um, and I'm really excited to have him on our squad. Uh, the co-defense coordinator will be Mike Smith. He played here. Um, that's where I got to know him. He's one of the New York Jets for the last, I guess, four years and coached outside linebackers there. Uh, Trey Haverty also played here um, when I was playing. He's been at TCU and uh, was the defense coordinator at Millsaps College before that. He's coached safeties and receivers and he'll coach safeties and be the special teams coordinator here. Uh, Kevin Curtis, another former player, a uh, great player here at Texas Tech. He's been at Louisiana Tech the past three years. Um, he'll coach our corners. And John Scott, we just got him hired yesterday. He um, is from Georgia Southern, who has a tremendous track record of having great teams and great defenses. I think they led the nation in um, points allowed last year on defense at Georgia Southern. Brings a lot of energy, great recruiter, and really excited to have him. Offensively, um, we have Sonny Cumbie, kept him. Um, Y'all know Sonny has been here a long time. Great player here, been a great coach here. He'll coach the outside receivers, and he'll be a co-offense coordinator. Eric Morris, another uh, former Red Raider, wide receiver here that was um, with me at Houston for two years and was up at Washington State last year and, and does a great job coaching inside receivers. Um, Mike Jinks, we got him out of San Antonio Steel. He's won a state championship down there. One of the most respected high school coaches in the state. Uh, known him a long time, and, and he'll do a great job for us. And for offensive line, Mike Jinks is coaching running backs for us. Offensive line, we got Lee Hayes. Um, he was at West Texas A&M. He was the offense coordinator at Baylor. Um, most recently, he was at the University of Houston. And uh, he will coach our offensive line. 
Now the next challenge for Cliff Kingsbury will be finishing the recruiting class. National Signing Day is on February 6th. Reporting for the Double T Insider, I'm Joshua Cook. Coming up next on the Double T Insider, Jacorian Duffield continues his high-flying season for Texas Tech track and field. But first, here's the Texas Tech trivia question of the week. Your Texas Tech trivia question of the week for this week is, who is the only former Red Raider pitcher to throw a perfect game in Major League Baseball history? A. A.J. Ramos B. Chad Bettis C. Dallas Braden or D. Bobby Duran The answer to this question is coming up later in the Double T Insider, but first, here is a week in review. Appreciate everybody coming. We know what we're capable of, but we have to take it one match at a time. Marks. I'm looking for our people to have better marks each week. Every single guy is going to fight as hard as they can every single match. Fast and furious. Yeah, it's been hectic, but, but it's been fun. After one day, I saw it in the website that we are number one in the country. I was so happy for that. We have Rice, um, and Rice is uh, coming off a of Sweet 16. We need to step it up this week against the competition, and, uh, and when you do that, the times are going to take care of themselves. This week, we actually have some real, like, decent people to run against. We're going to ride together. It's going to be a great future, and we're excited about the 2013 version of Texas Tech football led by Coach Kingsbury. Texas Tech is on the rise. Now a national research university, a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say with pride, Guns up! Track and field star Jacorian Duffield is off to a rockin' start this year. It's only his second season at Texas Tech, and already he's cleared seven seven-foot bars. And he's just getting started. Here's Lindsey Bubb with the story. When I start my approach, really nothing. But uh, before I try to visualize my approach and how my steps are going to take and uh, staying away from the bar at takeoff and things like that. Entering the 2012 season, the name Jacorian Duffield wasn't known by many at Texas Tech or across the country. But the shirts Texas native quickly began to make a name for himself in the first meets wearing the scarlet and black. In the 2012 indoor season, Duffield cleared seven feet for the first time at the Red Raider Open by clearing seven feet and one and a half inches. Later in his freshman campaign, Duffield tied for fifth at the Big 12 Indoor Championship by clearing six feet and nine and a half inches. So far in 2013, Duffield has continued to find success indoors for the Red Raiders, breaking his own personal record by clearing seven feet and one and three quarter inches at the Texas Tech Open on January 12th. This marks the seventh time Duffield has cleared a bar of seven feet or higher in his Red Raider career. With the improved mark to begin his sophomore season, it is clear that Duffield has improved from year one to year two, and he is noticing it himself. Um, I would say I've, I've gotten a lot stronger. Um, more consistent in my approach last year. I was just like a freshman in the headlights, you would say, going into meets, and uh, approach would be good one time and then bad the rest of the meet. But this year, I'm definitely more consistent in my approach. Another difference from Duffield's freshman season is the addition of James Thomas as the combined events and vertical jump coach to Texas Tech. Thomas joined the Texas Tech coaching staff after a six-year stint at the University of Kentucky. He played an integral role in developing the Kentucky combined events and jumps program into a national contender as well as a regular force in the SEC. So far, Duffield is enjoying that same style of coaching in the Big 12. He brought a lot of the same things, but also a different aspect in training, so which I've adapted well to. And uh, his style of coaching is definitely fitting for me as well. So with his coaching, I don't know how high I'm going to go this year. I mean, uh, just, just early on and uh, kind of working through the fall, he's just shown me he's a competitor. He wasn't worrying about not clearing a certain bar. He was more upset about losing. You know, and I like competitors. Competitors are always going to do well in this sport, do well in this league. So far this season, the approach has been very consistent. At the Mass Rider Open, Duffield cleared seven and a quarter inches, placing second overall in the meet. The new coach is happy with the consistency so far, with two seven-foot bars cleared by the sophomore. I mean, one of the biggest things in the vertical jumps, high jump, is you want to see some version of consistency. 
and to start coming out and jumping good. Even when bars come down, you look for certain things that show you that he has it figured out. It's a good thing, and he showed me that he's figuring this thing out, and he's showing a level of consistency. Uh, he's, he's only a sophomore now, but he's become like our senior leader. He's a guy that's experienced, that's been here, and he takes people under his wing and supports them and kind of shows them the right way. And he's somebody I can expect every day at practice to do the right things, to work hard, be the first one to get it done, and it's starting to show in his competition. Even though Duffield is well known for the bars he does clear, there are a lot of times when it takes more than one attempt to clear a bar. During the Mass Rider Open, on Duffield's last two bars that he cleared, it took second attempts on both. It was after the first attempt each time that Duffield headed right for Coach Thomas to get simple advice. Just simple cues. He, you know, we're not going to come here and try and reinvent anything on a meet day, so he knows at this point kind of what he needs to do and just trying to reinforce some of the things. Sometimes he gets a little anxious. Sometimes you're just having conversation just to break the nerves. Just want to make sure he stays on top and keeps his mind focused on the next, the next bar. This set is a great start. I mean, uh, me and Bradley both, we have a lot of PRs Running left in us indoor, I feel like, so it's good to just show that we can compete at a high level with the high uh, jumpers of Kansas State and all the other jump good jumpers in the NCAA. Reporting for the Double T Insider, I'm Lindsey Bubb. Women's tennis is underway for the season and the number 21 Lady Raiders look to keep the ball rolling. The Double T Insider sits down with senior captain of the team, Caroline Stark, in our new player profile. I still kind of feel like a freshman sometimes, but um, it's been amazing and it just, I honestly can't imagine myself being anywhere but Texas Tech. It's really, like, I feel like I've become part of the family here and it's, it's really special, so it's kind of sad that this is my last season and everything. It hasn't hit me yet, so it's not sad yet, but it will be for sure. What I remember the most was selling her and her parents basically a dream of what's going to happen, you know, three to four years away from now. I remember exactly like being here, watching practice, watching Todd work with the girls, and that's what really drew me in. Um, I really liked how intense Todd was and how much the girls respected him. My recruiting visit is pretty clear. It was the big weekend where we played uh, UT in football and they were number one in the nation at the time. And that was, I was sold right then and there when we won that game. That was so much fun. Just the school spirit and pride is something I knew I wanted to be a part of. Athletically, she, she played tennis about six months of the year. I mean, she was an all-state softball player in Wisconsin. She'd never focused entirely on tennis for a 12-month period. So I knew what she had done was basically just some pure talent and, and not getting a lot of the advantages of some of the other recruits that were going around the country. She was so much about the team and the, the program and making a difference and so much less about herself and um, immediately made an impact on me and knew she was going to be someone who's going to be very, very special with this program and she's lived up to every bit of that if not more. I just feel really lucky that we all came in together. Uh, we've been through like the highest highs, the lowest lows. We've been through everything together. He really recruited or really sold that he wanted to recruit tough girls who uh, worked really hard, all had the same goal in mind, uh, just selfless and everything for the team. And I mean, that's, that's what it's been since I've been here, so. Those three are very special to me um, because they were my first and, and not only that, but they're um, their willingness to, to be so uh, selfless in their efforts to, to change the dynamics of this team. I, I believe Todd when he was telling me like what he wanted um, the program to turn into and I, I knew that he was going to put something really special together but I never really thought that it would happen while I was here or just the feelings that we had last season. I didn't never imagine that. That definitely blew my mind there. Uh, I started here as a freshman and I've been through all the things that the younger girls are going through now so I like being able to be there for them and I mean shed some light on situations where they need help or and, they, and you know what like even though they're younger they do the same thing for me. She was able to kind of mentor them into hey this is the way we do things this is what we're trying to change and we're not going to accept anything less than that and so she's she's been a vocal leader and a leader behind the scenes. She's developed into the player that I knew she could be. Um, but I tell you where she's better is that she's much more fearless on the tennis court and loved the big moment more than I thought she would. I think we just have bigger and better goals for this year. We know what we're capable of, but we have to take it one match at a time because it is a new season. It's not like we're starting off on top again. Uh, we have to earn our way back up there. Coming up after the break, a Red Raider will race against time in our On the Clock segment. But first, here's the answer to our Texas Tech trivia question. Earlier in the Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week, we asked, who is the only former Red Raider pitcher to throw a perfect game in Major League Baseball history? The answer is C, Dallas Braden. 
Braden became the 19th pitcher in Major League Baseball history to throw a perfect game. He threw that perfect game on May 9, 2010, when the Oakland A's defeated the Tampa Bay Rays 4 to nothing. This has been your Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week. Be sure to check out the Double T Insider every week for a brand new Texas Tech Trivia Question. Don't go anywhere. The Double T Insider rolls on after the break. Texas Tech is on the rise. Now a national research university, a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say. With pride, guns up. Welcome back to the Double T Insider. A new Red Raider goes on the clock with Erica Taylor. Double T Insider here, and we are on the clock with Gabriel Wonderly, a game where I give Gabriel 10 scenarios, and he has to answer them to the best of his ability, all in 60 seconds. All right, are you ready? Ready. 60 seconds on the clock, please. Okay. If I was stranded on a deserted island, the three things I must have are... Family, girlfriend, and uh, any kind of food. The first thing on my mind on a Monday morning is... Man, I have good, I gotta go to class. <laughs> a celebrity I would love to have dinner with is uh, Zell Benchin. <laughs> My teammates say I am uh, calm. My first job was never had a job. I would donate a million dollars to any kind of institution, charity. My favorite quotation to live by is. Uh, I have like more of a poem, so like a, from Rupert Kipling, it's kind of long. <laughs> if I could teleport back into time, I would travel to? I'm just perfect where I am now. My, per my favorite ca cartoon character as a kid was? Time. <laughs> oh, sorry you did not beat the clock, but thanks oh, for playing man. anyway. Okay. I'm Erica Taylor and we were on the clock with Gabriel Wonderly. With the show winding down, here's what's coming up for Texas Tech Athletics. This Wednesday, Red Raider fans can expect a showdown inside the United Spirit Arena. Texas Tech women's basketball will face Big 12 rival Baylor and look to upset another top 25 opponent. The Lady Raiders open Big 12 competition by upsetting number 13 Oklahoma State 64-59 in Stillwater and defeated number 23 Kansas 70-63 inside the USA. Baylor currently leads the Big 12 standings and is at the top of the national rankings. Texas Tech's last win against the number one Lady Bears was in 2011 with a 56 to 45 upset. Wednesday's tip-off is set for 7 p.m. and can be seen on Fox Sports Net. Texas Tech track and field have a busy weekend coming up. Beginning Friday, some athletes will compete in the New Balance Invitational in New York and some will compete in the Mayo Invitational in Notre Dame. Both indoor meets will continue into Saturday. Tech track and field will also host the Red Raider Open inside the Athletic Training Center on Saturday. Field events are scheduled for 10 a.m. and running events will begin at 11.30 a.m. Also on Saturday, Red Raider basketball will square off against West Virginia inside the USA. With a 56-51 win over Iowa State, Texas Tech men's basketball have now doubled their conference wins from last season. In the win against the Cyclones, freshman guard Josh Gray led Tech with 16 points. Sophomore forward Jordan Tolbert followed with 13 points and 8 rebounds. Game time is set for 12.30 p.m., so get your guns up. Meanwhile, Lady Raider basketball will be on the road to seek out revenge against Iowa State. Texas Tech forced 22 turnovers and had 14 steals in the previous match, but it wasn't enough to take down the Cyclones, falling 58-54 inside the USA. Saturday's game time is set for 1 p.m. Finally, women's tennis will be in Tucson, Arizona as part of the ITA kickoff weekend. Saturday, Texas Tech will face Arizona beginning at 2 p.m., and Sunday, the Lady Raiders will face Sacramento State. Match time is set for 11 a.m. Well, that does it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Next week, we'll be featuring former Red Raider hurdler Shane Brathwaite 
Detroit, and also we'll bring you highlights from the Texas Tech Baseball Alumni Game. And we'll also be back with a brand new segment called Don't Sweat the Technique, where a track and field athlete breaks down their event step by step. And we'll also be back with another Red Raider on the clock. Also, be sure to go find us on Facebook. Search for Double T Insider. Also on Twitter, at Double T Insider. Never miss another episode again. And also on top of that, check out our daily version of Double T Insider, DTI Daily Sports Update, coming to you every Monday through Friday. For Joshua Cook, I'm Erica Taylor. Have a great week, everyone.